To be filled with the Spirit means to gladly submit the totality of your being to the maximum influence or control of the Holy Ghost. I want to give you a Bible passage to prove or authenticate this definition I have just projected onto you. Move quickly to the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 19. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 19. This is the Apostle Paul writing through the leadership of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Then he goes on to say, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, to the Lord. Praise Jesus forevermore. In the Bible passage we just finished reading, being filled with the Spirit is contrasted with being filled or drunk with wine. The idea for this contrast is for the born again or the new creation in Christ to fully submit the totality of his or her body unto God or unto the Holy Ghost rather than other forces. You see, when you put on Jesus, God wants your entire life to be controlled fully by His Spirit. God does not want the totality of your being to be controlled by other forces such as unforgiveness, such as fornication, such as bitterness, such as pains, such as evil. God wants the totality of your being to be influenced or controlled by His Spirit. By His Spirit. By His Spirit. This is why He says we should not be drunk with wine, but rather we should be filled with the Holy Ghost. In other words, just as a drunkard allows the totality of his or her being to be influenced or controlled by alcohol, God says, once you put on Jesus and you make Jesus the Lord of your life, allow the totality of your being to be controlled by his spirit. By his spirit. You see, when a man is full of wine, when a man gets drunk, that man does not decide for himself or herself. Rather, it is what is inside him or her that decides for him or her. So when a drunkard gets drunk with alcohol and then the alcohol says, sleep on the ground, that man or woman will gladly sleep on the ground. When the alcohol tells the drunkard, the gutter, is your bedroom the drunkard will gladly lie in a gutter and will see the gutter as his or a bedroom no wonder many get drunk they get home their wife serves them food and then they will exchange soup with water what do I mean by this statement they see water as soup and soup as water this is because they are under the influence of alcohol. And in such condition, they don't question what the alcohol tells them to do. So God, through the Apostle Paul in this Bible passage, is telling us that as soon as we make Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, we are supposed to allow the Holy Ghost to direct our lives. We are supposed to allow the Holy Ghost to influence our decisions. We are supposed to allow the Holy Ghost to influence the way we live our life. The way we think, the way we dress, the way we walk, the way we carry ourselves about. God wants the Holy Ghost to control all these aspects of our lives. Hallelujah. Rather than allowing order forces to control us God does not want a new creation 
to be controlled by bitterness. This is why he says, let all bitterness, let all bitterness, let all bitterness get out of your being. Why? God has no part in bitterness. It is the devil. So when you allow bitterness to rule your entire being, the totality of your being will be driven onto the very reign of the devil. So he says, get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all slander. Get rid of all evil speaking. Meaning, when you become born again, God expects you to live for him. And how can you live for him? You can only live for God when you allow the Holy Ghost to influence your entire life. In other words, to control your entire life as alcohol does to a drunkard. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now before I move further into the message, I want to project this truth unto you. And this is what I want to project unto you. There is an important difference between the indwelling of the Holy Ghost and then being filled with the Spirit. The two are not the same. The two are two different experiences with the Holy Ghost. One may ask, what is the difference between the indwelling of the Holy Ghost and then being filled with the Holy Ghost? This is the difference. All believers in Christ Jesus have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in them. They have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in them. And this experience is a one-time experience. And the following Bible passages brings to light what I'm putting across to you. John chapter 14, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Praise Jesus forevermore. So all believers in Christ Jesus have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in them. But this is not so when it comes to being filled with the Holy Ghost. It is not everybody born again that has the infilling of the Holy Ghost. In other words, that is being filled with the Spirit. It takes some, some, some are filled with the Spirit. Others are not filled with the Spirit. Others are not filled with the Spirit. And listen to me very carefully. Being filled with the Spirit is an experience that must be a continuous thing. It is not a one-time thing just like the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. It is not a one-time experience. Now listen to me very carefully. When you study the Greek rendering of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 19, the phrase being filled with the Spirit was rendered in a present continuous tense. Meaning it is something that needs to be done on constant basis. On constant basis and not a one-time experience. This now brings us to an important question. And the question is, how can one be filled with the Spirit? But before we get into how can one be filled with the Spirit, I would love to project this truth unto you, which is, it is your responsibility to be filled with the Spirit. And in your quest to be filled with the Spirit, you must be willing to empty your power over your personality. All that I'm trying to tell you is this. You must be willing to submit the totality of your being unto God. Not part of your being unto God. But the totality of your being must be submitted unto God. There are many out there who have submitted part of their beings unto God. And then part of their beings unto, their, unto themselves and then part of their being unto the devil. When you find yourself in this situation, it will become very difficult to be filled with the Spirit. Why? God cannot fully have 
your entire being. And once God cannot fully have your entire being, you cannot be filled with the Spirit. The only way you can be filled with the Spirit is to submit the totality of your being unto God. Unto God. Unto God. And the reason why I am saying you must submit the totality of your being unto God is this. You can never and ever control yourself and expect God to be and expect God to control your being. You can't. You can't. You either give up on yourself and hand up and hand your personality unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God cannot be in charge of your personality when in reality you are in charge of yourself. When you are in charge of yourself, praise Jesus forevermore. So let's move on to the question, how can one be filled with the Spirit? Hallelujah. I want us to move back to our opening scripture, which is the first scripture I projected onto you at the beginning of this message, which is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is essence, but be filled with the Spirit. You see, the Bible says, Be filled with the Spirit. Now, the Apostle Paul, through the leadership of the Holy Ghost, is now projecting or bringing to light how one can be filled with the Spirit. He says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This is very, very beautiful. I want you to take note of an important truth in the scripture. The apostle Paul, through the leadership of the Holy Ghost, never said, speaking to one another. But he said, speaking to yourself, meaning you talk to yourself. You talk to yourself. How? You can mention your name and go like Clifford. You are too blessed. Clifford, you are too anointed. Clifford, the glory of God is all over you. This is what it means to speak to yourself. You talk to yourself. At times you can do this. By looking at yourself in the mirror. And you point to your image. And go like. Boy oh boy you are too blessed. Boy oh boy you are loaded. With divinity. Greater is he that is in you. Than he that is in the world. You can look at yourself and go like. Boy oh boy. You are unstoppable. The glory of God is all over you. So he says. Speaking to yourself. In hymns. In hymns, psalms, spiritual songs, and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. So to be filled with the Spirit, you must learn to constantly speak to yourself. In psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs. But it's so sad that this era of believers, we hate singing hymns. We tag hymns to the old folks in the Lord. And we tag only spiritual songs to the new era or breed of believers. Listen to me very carefully. Hymns has a place, it plays, has a place in your life. It has a place in your life. A place in your life you must never and ever joke with. You must never joke with. He says, sing hymns. Speak unto yourself, sons. Speak unto yourself, sons. You can get yourself into the Bible and then begin to quote some of the psalms written in the Bible, which is the word of God over your life. You can do that. You can do that. 
My head shall be anointed with fresh oil. My horn shall be exalted like that of a unicorn. I am too blessed by God. Hallelujah. Now listen to me very, very, very carefully. The revelation stated in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 19 is different from the revelation stated in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Now in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 the Bible says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You see never handle the word of God anyhow. The word of God must be taken from the written pages in the Bible through meditation under the influence of the Holy Ghost into your spirits. Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, not in all foolishness. You see, when your life allows the word of God to dominate over your entire being, God's word will never make you foolish. God's word will make you wise. Why? The word of God is the wisdom of God expressed unto humanity. This is why you must strive to get the word of God into your being through meditation. But it's so sad that many under the word of God anyhow. How? They place the word of God under their pillow. Sleep on the word of God. They don't bring it out from their pillow and then meditate on it. It's so sad many keep the word of God as a decoration on their bookshelf. But Paul says, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You see, when the word of God dominates over your entire being, in other words, when it influences, when it, when it influences your entire being, you'll not be stupid. You'll not be stupid. Why? You can't have God's word in you. Allow God's word to dominate, influence your entire being and you end up becoming foolish. The word of God will make you wise. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let me explain this scripture against Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 19 with a word prescription. When you study Ephesians 5 verses 18, we are to speak to ourselves hymns, psalms, spiritual songs and then making melody unto the Lord from the depth of our hearts which is from our spirits unto him. Look at it again. The same prescription, but different usage. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. He says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Have you seen that? One, you administer to yourself. And the order you administer to another. With Ephesians 5.18, you administer to yourself. With Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, you administer to another. To another. To another is a powerful prescription to make your life whole and to make the life of others whole. I can just imagine somebody walks to me and goes like, Reverend Clifford, life is not easy. These are rough. In fact, nothing is working in my life. Everything is falling apart. Help me in prayers. Pray for me, man of God. Cast out that devil out of me. Then I hold such a person's hand and go like, 
Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we pray. You see such a person go like, Hold on, man of God. This is not what I'm expecting you to do. Maybe you didn't hear me right. I said things are not working right with me. Life is rough for me. Then you hear me go like, I understand your brother. I understand your sister. Then I raise another hymn like, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. Trusting only thee. Trusting thee for full salvation. I wonder what will go on in the mind of such a person I am speaking hymns unto. I am trusting, trusting only Thee. I am trusting, trusting, trusting only Thee. I am trusting, trusting, trusting only thee. By the time I finish singing and saying trusting only thee, such a person may walk out of my presence. Or because such a person has been programmed to believe that everything must be prayer. In other words, to get problems solved in your life is solely prayer. But listen to me very, very carefully. Prayer in reality is not the master key as being preached out there. Prayer in reality is one of the keys for unlocking the supernatural into the life of people. When we talk about the master key in the realms of God, it is divine direction. Some things do not need prayer to get them solved. It needs wisdom. Some things do not need prayer to get them solved. It will take you to fear God. To get that thing solved. Some things does not need prayer to get them solved. It will take you to obey God. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 downwards the Bible says. If you were diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. Which I am presenting unto you. He says you shall be blessed. Some blessing will never respond to you or because you are praying. They will rather respond to you when you obey God. Some blessing and some things will respond unto you when you gladly forgive. In other words, you let go of unforgiveness in your heart. There are many praying in the spirit of disobedience. And pray in that manner will never and ever release the supernatural into your life. So prayer is not the master key. It is one of the keys in unlocking the supernatural into a man or a woman's life. And one of the keys to get one restored fully unto glory is speaking unto one another in hymns in psalms spiritual songs and then making melody from your heart 
unto God. One of the keys also in restoring oneself unto blessing, unto glory, or in making one to become so aware of the presence of God around his or her life is to learn to speak unto himself. Hymns, psalms, spiritual songs, and then making melody unto God. Now look at it very carefully. He says, speaking unto yourselves, hymns, psalms, spiritual songs. And then he said, when you do all these things, now make melody from your spirits unto God. Unto God. This is very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Why did God put make melody unto God from your heart at the last part of the scripture? The reason is this. The state or condition of your being matters a lot when you go to God. You can have God in your dimension when your entire being is clouded with worry. When your entire being is clouded with fear. So God says, before you can become aware of my presence in your domain, work on yourself. And tell us how you must work on yourself. You must speak unto yourself, hymns. You must speak unto yourself, psalms. You must speak unto yourself, spiritual songs. He says, by the time you get to the spiritual song, your spirit man will be conditioned rightly to be able to bless me with songs of glory. To bless me with songs of adoration. With songs of worship. I say, making melody unto God from your heart. You see the word heart in this Bible passage does not refer to the physical heart in your body that pumps blood to the various aspects of your body. The word heart in this Bible passage refers to your spirit man. God wants you to worship him. In spirit, God wants you to adore him in spirit. God wants you to present your request and everything you want to give unto him through your spirits. So he says, speak unto yourself, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and then make melody unto me. Make melody unto me from your spirits. Hallelujah. Today, we shall be filled with the Spirit. What do I mean by this statement? We'll spend time to sing hymns unto ourselves. So wherever you are, all I want you to do is connect your spirit to the Holy Ghost. In other words, weave your spirit with the Holy Ghost. Get rid of the worries in your mind. Get rid of that which is happening around you. Focus your heart, your mind, your entire being onto Jesus. Forget about whatever you are going through in life. As I invite our sister, Sister Amanda, to come and then take us through hymns. I'll come back and then bless your destiny. Hallelujah. Sister Amanda, you are welcome. And I pray that God will use you to bless our lovely viewers. God bless you greatly. May God help you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, that even as we sing these psalms, these hymns and these spiritual songs, that you will rest on us and glorify your name. Amen. Oh. 
Bless you greatly, sister Amanda Kasim, for blessing us greatly. I pray for you today that the glory of God rest upon you, that the anointing of God beautify your destiny, be strengthened with inner minds, a mind that will cause you to explode in power. A might that will cause you to explode in favor. A might that will cause you to inherit the inheritance of the Gentile. A might that will make you unstoppable in this realm of life. I declare and decree that the totality of your being be overshadowed. In other words, be epicazoed by the Spirit of the Lord. Fail what power upon your life. It is destroyed. Whatever steers your destiny unto evil, that then has come to an end. In the name of Jesus, I declare the decree sickness authority upon you. It is coming to an end. I command HIV. I command typhoid. I command cancer. I command stroke. I command any deadly disease upon your health. Be flushed out of your pain. Be flushed out of your being. Be flushed out of your being. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, If that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if that spirit dwells in you, he will vitalize your mortal body. I see the Holy Ghost in you, changing that evil on your destiny into good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Parando suko barus kabahandia, raganda sharabata. Barando suko barus kabah. I declare and decree that the anointing of God make you able in that situation you have just found yourself in, in that situation that has made you unable. May the anointing of God make you able. May the anointing of God cause you to break through. To break through that limitation. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and the Lord is that spirit. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. I declare and decree. Your mess life. Be transformed or metaphor. Into miracles. Your test. Turn into testimony. Your bitter life turn into sweetness. Receive power and grace to walk in the fear of the Lord and to walk in total love unto the Lord. God bless you greatly. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.